Once we've got a data frame in hand, let's look at how to get at the things in it. Now, in the context of Spark SQL, a data frame is going to come from a query on a Cassandra table. So it's going to have rows in it. Those rows are going to have columns. And we're going to want programmatically to be able to get at the columns and rows of the data frame to build our application. There are a few different ways of doing that. Let's take a look. Suppose you want to look at the schema of a data frame and you're just hacking in the Spark shell. The print schema method is super handy for that. What it's going to do is it's going to dump to the shell in human readable format uh, the schema of the data frame. So you get the column names, you'll get the data types in a nice little summary for you to be able to read. Super handy hacking and debugging tool. And that's great if you just want something human readable, but suppose you need programmatic access to the schema. The dtypes method is going to give you an array with the schema in it. As you can see by the output on the slide, the array is an array of two element tuples, the first element of the tuple being the column name and the second element being the data type. So if you need to introspect the schema of a data frame programmatically, this is a great way to go about it. Another way to solve the same problem is the schema method on the data frame object. And that's going to do the same thing. It's going to return a data structure to us that will allow us programmatically to introspect the schema of the data frame. Except instead of an array of tuples, this time it's a struct type object which is going to contain struct field objects, which themselves will tell us the column name and the data type. So this is programmatic access to the data frame schema in terms of those struct type and struct field objects that are defined in the Spark SQL API. Schema is great. Of course, we also might want to access the data that's in a data frame as well. So here we're creating a data frame with a simple SQL query with that API method that we love, just passing the CQL string directly into that SQL method. We get a data frame back and we call the first method. This is a convenient way to get the first element of that query back out. Now we have a row. And if you look at the type of that, that's that Spark SQL row class that we've seen before. And now we can start to interact with that row API a little bit. You see, the first thing we do there is we access by integer index the first field in the row. So that's that print line row zero. So we have zero based indexing into the columns in the data frame. And that first column, if you just look up at the query, you can remind yourself that's the title. And so we get Alice in Wonderland back as a result. Next, we'd like to access the second column in the data frame. That's the release here at index one. Now, the first thing we do, since this might be null, is we check to see if there's a null there. That's that row is null at index one call there. It turns out it's not null. We proceed at the last line of the example to just get the int at index one, and we see uh, Alice in Wonderland was released in 2010. You got to bear in mind that second approach, which has the type baked into the getter, is get int. Uh, that only works if the column is of a type that has a predefined getter. So if there's, for example, a collection type, something that's a list or a set or a map in the Cassandra data, we're going to have to get it just by its index and deal with the value that comes back because Spark SQL doesn't define type-based getters for collection types. So that first method is the most general. That second one appears to be a little bit more type safe and is a little more self-documenting. So you have to make the trade-off as to which one of those you're going to use. So in this example, we'll take it up a notch and actually query a collection type. That's going to be the genres column. Genres is a set of strings in the movies table that we're querying. So once again, we'll query it, we'll get our data frame, we'll get the first item back. So now we have that row object we can mess with. We'll get the first element out of the row. That's the row zero call there. And we'll coerce it with that as instance of call to be a sequence of strings. And that finally we call for each on. That's the spark for each that we're calling on that sequence and print each one of them. And we see Alice in Wonderland is an adventure film, a family film, and a fantasy film. That's just a quick overview of how we access schema and data inside of data frames. You can see there is not much to it, which is good news. It's an easy API to learn, uh, but still one that's going to let you get your work done.